hold on, my mind is still like goo right now. So all we did was upload this image and it understood the Golden Threads Trilogy Book Three, the word three, not even the number three. Yeah. It understood that this was the title, this is the tagline, and this is the author name. Welcome to the Future Fiction Academy caves. This is like the space that all the founders, like we play weekly all the time with the newest stuff in AI. So uh, we are lucky we have all the instructors here. We've got Karen in the house, Christine Breen in the house, and Steph Pajonas and Leland Artra. And then I'm Elizabeth Ann West. So uh, we have something to show you guys, we think. Uh, we just, I just got access to the very new GPT-4 vision. All right, so this just appeared last night for me where all of a sudden I have this new tab, uh, alpha and GPT vision with alpha. We're going to upload a file. We're gonna go with uh, just a picture from mid journey. That's four women with dragons that I generated a few weeks ago. So that's what's in picture.png. Now I called it picture.png so that we're not giving any information to the AI. We're not giving it any help. You know, it's got to actually read the picture. And, and, you know, I think most people would say what's in the picture, but we're going to go even further. We're going to say, write me a story premise and hook based on the set of, uh, set of images in the picture. Sound good? And so as soon as you click go, it's going to actually show you that image. So you can see this is an image that was created with Midjourney. Okay, Whispers of Draconaria. Ancient dragons and humans coexist. Sacred sisterhood. So it picked up that there's these four women in this image that it needs to incorporate into the book. Eldamara, a young orphan, discovers her lineage as the last of the Draconaria. Wow. That's incredible. I am shocked. What details in the image uh, influenced your story idea? Okay, the images prominently feature a woman interacting with a dragon in a close, non-hostile manner. Wow. It picked up that there's flowers, flowering garments, uh, it was fantasy setting. Elegant and armor-like qualities. The intimacy, it was like a close interaction between the woman and the dragons. This is all pretty spot on, wouldn't you say? I know, and it even thought to do that. How about give them all four, give each woman a name? Each woman and dragon a name based on their image. The images are numbered one through four clockwise starting in the top left corner. Then give each woman and dragon a character description based on their image. Oh my gosh, this is a lot. <laughs> so I've asked it not only to like do three different steps and it's also got to number these images one through four clockwise. So top left, Aleth, the dragon is Theraval. It's also bringing it back into Draconaria. So it, it's reading in the context of the conversation. So we are keeping our context. So we're going we're gonna to check this against the images. So let's look. Aleth, she's got a flowing silver blue dress, intricate armor. Let's go up to the top left and see what it's, okay. So we have a flowing blue dress, blue dress kind of silverish armor. The dragon there is kind of like a bluish. This has the most like flowers and stuff here. So Aleth, so moonlight magic, her silvery hair. She had kind of, it's kind of like purplish silvery. Um, she's wise and protective, ancient texts and chronicles. His red eyes are said to pierce through the veil. Of, does he have red eyes? Oh, he does. Wow. I would not have even picked up on that. I'm going to zoom, zoom in so you guys can see these details a little bit better. That is, I mean, it's actually like an orangish red eye, but I can't believe that the AI picked that up. All right. The dragon it decided was blue, silver, prominent horns, red eyes, pierced through the veil of time. And he often speaks in riddles. Seraphine on the top right, strength in nature, flowing white hair, floral, floral tiara. She's a healer and a botanist. And then the, the dragon is purple scales. He's the blossom warden. I, I do see how they got botany from her because her dress actually has like flower and bows and she's kind of, I don't know, she's a healer. So she's kind of relaxing. That's always like the, the person who stays in the back, right? In the party. You just throw the potions. Stand behind the fighter. Yeah. All right. So then the third one, which it should be the bottom right, 
bottom right. So I did that, Alara. She's adorned in light pink. She's the epitome of grace. She is the bard and storyteller <laughs> recurring, recounting tales of old. And then the dragon is wise. He is known as the stone heart or repository of ancient history. That's this one. I could see where they thought it was stone-like and it kind of, it did get the pink right for her. Um, we don't have an instrument or anything, but I guess it decided she's the bard. And then this last one, I don't know what it did because she's got an extra hand in there. That's how you know that this is mid-journey. The bottom left, her name is Rhiannon and she's an enchantress and seer able to glimpse into the shadows of the future and speak of the spirits of the past. She's introspective and, and shrouded in her own thoughts. Well, thank God it didn't talk about her extra hand. And then Umbrith is the shadow warden. So I would say- I'm disappointed. So it should have talked about her extra hand. It should have talked about her extra hand. Now we want to do one more test, a couple more tests, actually, two more. So we're going to go with a new chat and go back to alpha. And this time I'm going to upload a book cover. Now I'm curious because one of the things about AI and images is that it can never read the text, right? That's on images. Who is the author of this book? So I'm kind of giving it context because it's called book cover for the, for the title. So let's see if it can pull out author is. So it very clearly says in white print Leland Artra, I kind of want to test to see if it can recognize text inside of a, oh, whoa. Oh, here we go. To ask it to, uh, to describe, hey. to describe <laughs> the story based off the book cover. Third installment in the golden threads. Is that right? Yes, yeah, absolutely right. Oh my goodness. The background has a parchment-like texture with mysterious mystical symbols and illustrations of ancient ships, historical or alternative world setting. Presence of nautical imagery, including a detailed ship with vibrant sails in the foreground implies that sea travel and exploration are likely significant aspects of the plot. They also have a magical, the sail, ship sails are not only colorful, but seem to have a magical or otherworldly quality to them, suggesting that the world and this story could involve magic or advanced technology. The overall tone of the cover suggests an epic fantasy tale, possibly with elements of adventure, mythology, and nautical exploration. I have no comment. That is, <laughs> I, that is, I mean, like that reads, that almost reads like my initial instructions to the author, to, to the author design when we, when we were coming up with it. Okay, so that was test number one. So we'll go with a new chat and we're gonna give it a new book cover. And this time the book cover is mine for The Gentleman is Mine, book cover number two. This does not have a cool mystical flying ship. <laughs> but, um, tell me everything you can about this book. So we have Elizabeth Ann West and we have The Gentleman is Mine. And it says a Mr. Darcy and Elizabeth Bennett novel of Pride and Prejudice variation. Oh. oh. We didn't get that information. This book isn't published. Your book was published a long time ago. It's very interesting that the response is different for a book that hasn't come out yet versus your book, which is over 10 years old and came out before 2021. Ah, yeah, I wonder. What if I want to make this book part of a series? Could you come up with other book titles? that would work for books in the same series. Let's see what it comes up with. The Gentleman is Mine, A Lady Heart's Desire, Pemberley's Promises, Whispers of Longbourn, Dances and Declarations, Courage and Courtship. Wow. Um, based on the book cover, please write a premise for that book. Sure. Set in the early 19th century, so far so good. In this Pride and Prejudice variation, Elizabeth Bennett is an aspiring writer who has always sought solace and inspiration in the picturesque landscapes of her beloved estate Longbourn. She spends her days writing poetry and stories about love and chivalry, but she's never experienced love herself. Her dreams are filled with a mysterious gallant figure who seems to beckon her from the dis Okay, I'm adding that scene in now. The Gentleman is Mine is a tale of clandestine romance, artistic passion, and soulful connections. Elizabeth and Darcy must decide between upholding their family legacies and societal norms or giving in to the undeniable love that pulls their hearts together. I'm still astounded by what it can do with an image. Um, I love that it can come up with characterization. So you could upload your character images and get a character description based off of them. I bet you could do the same thing for settings. Mm. You have pictures of places. I'm thinking um, 
that they're going to be some of my hero heroes and heroines uploaded to this and just see what it comes up with for story premises. Yeah, it's a fantastic brainstorming tool. We did actually show that it can handle a four square. And not mm -hmm. only that, you could actually custom make your four square. So not just mid journey, but you could have a whole cast of characters and is the protagonist, the antagonist, the ally and the, the setting or whatever come up with a story premise. Thank you for joining us on something wickedly cool in AI. Um, this is what we do in our lab sessions. So the Future Fiction Academy is eight labs a week. You can come live, you can watch the replays after, you get the transcript, you also get the lab report. So the five of us are the main instructors for Future Fiction Academy, and we work together to specialize in different parts of AI tools to come up with really innovative prompting and how to use these tools in our everyday publishing careers. So if you would like to join the Future Fiction Academy, we would love to have you because uh, it's a community that is AI positive and we're all working together to stay on top of this new technology before we all get left behind. So by sticking together, we, you know, for example, I kind of specialize in open AI and prompt engineering. Um, who here specializes in series writing, novellas and novels? Yep, and yep. And then who specializes in mid journey and all of the artistic stuff? And <laughs> yep. So basically, between the instructors, we all have overlapping skills, and we invite you. It has a three day free trial. We invite you to come join us and have fun because we love to play with this stuff, um, and we love to share share it. So hope to see you in lab soon. Bye. Uh, uh, take two. <laughs> Okay, so I can't even do it. Stop now. laughing now. Stay serious. Stay serious. <laughs>